Remember you are baptized and be thankful. Please join me in the call to worship. We give thanks for the works of God. We worship in the presence of God. Amen. Nothing we have done, nothing we can ever do, can separate us from the love of God made known to us in Jesus Christ. In Christ, we know mercy and grace. In Christ, we are washed clean and made new. In Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat> Please join me in prayer. We give you thanks, holy God, for the promises you've kept and the blessings you've bestowed. As we open <clears throat> your word this day, Remind us that you have made us for life in your kingdom. Teach us how to live trusting in your guidance, trusting in your care. Assure us by the work of your spirit that we are never alone. In Christ we pray, amen. <clears throat> Scripture reading for this morning is Romans 8 verses 26 through 28 and then I'll skip down to verses 35 through 39. The Holy Spirit not only provides us comfort but Paul says that it is the Spirit who intercedes for us when we do not have the words to pray for ourselves. In the midst of the sufferings and uncertainties of life Paul reassures us that no matter what happens, there is nothing, nothing that can separate us from God's love. There is promise and comfort here. Listen for God's holy word. <clears throat> Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. 
we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. <coughs> no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ okay. Jesus our Lord. Here in the reading of God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord, the word of life. I don't know all that much about submarines, but my dad was a 20 year career Navy man, and he always talked about how he'd never ever want to serve on a submarine. There were lots of different reasons for that, but apparently successful submarine rescues are pretty rare. The complex variables of depth and pressure, temperature and time conspire to doom most trapped sailors. During one rescue attempt, a message could be heard reverberating through the hull of a downed sub. It was tapped out in code from the inside, metal clanging against metal. Is there any hope? Is there any hope? I believe that the crazy, messed up, and broken world we live in is waiting for an answer to that question. The opinion guru George Gallup has concluded people in many nations appear to be searching for the new intention, intensity for spiritual moorings, one of the key factors prompting this search is certainly a need for hope in these troubled times. That quote was from six years ago, and yet it is apropos today, isn't it? It's true of our lives in these pandemic uncertain days, days of civil unrest in our country, that people are in need of finding hope. In the eighth chapter of his letters to the Romans, the Apostle Paul assures us that Christians have grounds for hope. Our hope is in God alone. Paul's purpose in writing these words is not to educate or eliminate the Romans. It is to inspire and assure them. And I trust that they can do the same for us this morning. These few verses in Paul's letter to the Romans hit on some of the high notes of faith, I think. High notes of faith are what you can sing and celebrate. <coughs> High notes of faith are what we can hold on to when our world seems to be a bit out of control. And so I want us to look at two of these high notes of faith that I see Paul celebrating in this passage. The first one is that God's Spirit is in us. In verse 26, Paul says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. This portion of Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us of what it means to live not by things of the flesh, but by the grace of God. Individual Christians and the body of believers wait with hope and patience 
for the fullness of God's grace to be revealed. As we wait, we are not alone. Who is with us? The very Spirit of God who helps us in our weakness and who intercedes for us when words fail us, when we are so torn and wounded by this life that we can utter nothing. You don't have to live very long to learn that life can be difficult sometimes. I don't know about up here in the north. Back home, I would have gotten an amen for that. Yeah? Life is difficult sometimes. Amen. I know a small portion of what some of you are carrying in your lives because a handful of you have already talked and shared some of the stories of your life. Maybe there are times when we feel wounded or weak or debilitated with fear. Maybe there are times when we cannot celebrate life or seem to touch joy because joy seems to be at the bottom of a very deep well. Maybe there are times when we wonder if there is a God and whether God can hear us or even cares about us. Maybe there are times when we don't have the words to express the angst that eats at us, the yearning that we bear inside, the cries of our hearts for that which we cannot name and often keeps us awake at night. These are precisely the times when we rely on this first high note of faith. We are not alone. God's Spirit is in us and helps us in our weakness. Leonard Sweet says that Paul's good news is more than just a hang in there, attaboy kind of pep talk. For those who seek to live in Christ, the finish line is not the only important part of their story. God is not sitting at the end of our race waiting to catch us as we collapse, torn and tattered across the finish line. Paul's hope is grounded not only in the faith that God's plan will prevail at some eschatological end to time, but that we can know God's presence with us every step of the way. Sometimes we do not know how or what or why to pray, and so we are likely to avoid praying at all. But the Bible says that God already knows what we ask before we ask it. The Bible says that God knows better than we know ourselves what we need. Barbara Brown Taylor says that when all our words run out, when we are scraping the bottom of our verbal barrels and all that is left are some inarticulate longings, some hungers beyond expression, that is precisely when the Holy Spirit can really work best. The Holy Spirit bears those pieces of our souls to God in a way that makes divine sense and then returns to us with the good news that we are not alone, that God is with us and wants only good for us. The second high note of faith, I believe, offers us hope for the living of our lives, and that is that God's love surrounds us. If God is for us, Paul writes, who can be against us? There is nothing we can face or handle, Paul says, with the knowledge of God's love surrounding us. The story is told that Karl Barth, who was a world-renowned Swiss theologian 
and author of Church Dogmatics. How many of you have that sitting on your library shelves? The story goes that he was asked by a student in his class what the message of the Bible was. Supposedly, Bart's answer was, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells him so. I'm ready if you are. we would have sung that together, right? Yeah. I'm already teaching that to my grandchildren as that song was taught to me when I was a little girl, as I taught all my three sons. I found a new rendition of Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. It goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. Though my hair is white as snow, though my sight is growing dim, still he bids me trust in him. It goes on and on. I'm going to print it in the newsletter. Um, a reminder that to be reminded that Jesus loves us, it's not just for children. It is a promise from God our whole lives through that God's love will never leave us or fail us, that God is always for us and not against us. Ours is an incarnational faith because Jesus came to be with us as one of us. Because the Son of God put on flesh and walked with us. We believe that God is in the midst of our lives right here, right now. God is not removed from life or defined or limited by it. God is in the midst of life with us. God is with us in every moment, even when we think that illness or fear or hopelessness or anxiety or job loss or divorce or disappointment or disillusionment or death might define our lives. God is with us through Jesus Christ. Reminding us that we live with these things, perhaps, but we do not face any of them alone. What can separate us from the love of God? Shall death? Shall life and all that life hurls at us? No, Paul says, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. A minister friend told me this story about a man in his church with Parkinson's disease. He had been admitted to a nursing home after he lost his ability to communicate. Near the end of his life, he rarely recognized his wife of 53 years. As the family gathered around him, standing vigil in his last hours, my minister friend came by the nursing home to be with the family. He said that as he was praying, this man started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, in a clear, clear voice. 
Everything had been taken from this man, but at the end, his family was reassured that nothing, not even Parkinson's disease, could separate him from God's love. See, as Lewis once wrote, the moment you wake up each morning, all your wishes and hopes and concerns for the day can rush at you like wild animals. He said, our first job each morning consists in shoving it all back in listening so that that other voice, taking that other point of view, letting that other larger, stronger, quieter life come flooding in. That other, larger, quieter life is the assurance that because God is for us, no matter what life may bring our way, we don't have to face it alone. What shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Circumstances can't. Trials can't. Despair can't. Disease can't. COVID-19 can't. What shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Fear can't. Time can't. Distractions can't. Hopelessness can't. In spite of all these things, Paul says, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. The Spirit of God is within us and helps us in our weakness. The love of God surrounds us, reassuring us that God only wants good for us. This, this is our hope. A hope for the good. A hope for being held in the very heart of God. A hope for salvation. A hope for victory over death. There is powerful hope here for the living of our days. Now, Phil, I didn't talk to you, so your answer might be different, but I talked to a choir director one time about hitting the high notes when you're singing. He said you have to practice so that your voice and lungs are strong. Is that not true of our faith? We have to practice our faith. To hit the high notes successfully, he told me, you have to let go. I'm not so good at that. <laughs> let loose even, he said. <clears throat> even though it's scary and you worry you're not gonna hit that high note after all. Let go, let loose, and trust. I think the saying holds true for us hitting these high notes of faith. A good song can catch hold of us. We can find ourselves humming or singing it throughout the day. The Spirit of God is within us and helps us in our weakness. The love of God surrounds us, reassuring us that God only wants good for us. If we can learn these high notes of faith, learn to sing them every day, to hold them deep within us and trust in their power, they will have the power to sustain us and lift us up. If you don't remember anything else from the sermon today, I want you to remember this.
I threw stuff out in the first thing this morning. <laughs> um, please join me as we say what we believe, using the affirmation of faith in your bulletin. We believe that God calls us to hope for more than we have yet seen. The hope God gives us is ultimate confidence that supports us when lesser hopes fail us. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This hope gives us courage for the present struggle. This we believe. Please join me in prayer. <clears throat> o God, our God, holy and merciful, hear us as we pray. We think we are coming to you, but as we pray, we are reminded that long ago you came to us and sought us out. In Jesus Christ, you have purchased us for yourself. And by the Holy Spirit, you help us to know your great love for us. We give thanks that you have claimed us. Hear our prayers, Lord, as we acknowledge your claim and bow before you. Even as we try to pray, we can't find the words for all our concerns. There's so much unrest in our world, Lord. There is war and threat of war, and we know that we live in fearful times. There seems to be no end to the COVID outbreaks, and we're tired, Lord. We're tired of staying home and wearing masks. We're tired of distancing ourselves from one another. Hear the prayers of our hearts. Even as we try to pray, we can't find the words for all the worries for our children, for our parents, for our families, for those that we love and care about. There are those who are weighed down with burdens that seem too heavy to bear. There are those who are struggling or seem to have lost their way. There are those who are hurting and grieving and trying to make sense of what seems like senseless tragedy. Hear our cries for those we love. Even as we try to pray, we can't find words for all the anxiety we carry about the uncertainties in our lives, for the things we can't control, for the injustices we suffer, for the things we fear, for the hours we lose sleep or fret or worry. Here are our deepest longings from the unknowns before us. As we collect food, Lord, to share with those who have less than we do, it seems like such a small thing in the face of so much need. And yet we know that you can take what we bring and bless it and use it to make a difference in someone's life. Be for us, O Lord, a sound in the stillness. Be for us, O God, silence in the clamor. Turn our thoughts to the harmony of your speech and tune our speech to the rhythm of your silence. Even as we pray, Join not only our souls, but our voices with believers across the ages who have prayed like us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
knowing that God's love surrounds us and that we are not alone, go out into the world in joy and be at peace. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit hold you close. Amen.